So we're reading from the sixth canto, chapter 17, entitled Mother Parvati Curses Chitra Ketu, text 32. Naham virincho nakumara naradao. Nabrahma putra munaya suresha. Vidama yasye hitam amsa kamsaka. Natat swarupam pritagishamanina. Naham virincho nakumara naradao. Na Brahma Putra Munaya Suresha Vidhama Yasye Hitam Amsa Kamshaka Na Tat Swarupam Pritagishamanina Naham virincho nakumara naradao Na Brahma putra munaya suresaha Vidama yasye itang amsa kamshaka Na tat swarupam pritagishamanina Naham Vedincho Nakumara Naradao Naprama Putra Munaya Suresaha Vida Maya Siahitanam Sakam Saka Natat Swarupam Pritaki Shamanina Naham Vedincho Nakumara Naradao Nabrahma Putra Munaya Suresaha Vidama Yasya Hitanam Sakam Saka Na, not, aham, I, Lord Shiva, Virinchaha, Lord Brahma, Na, nor, Kumara, the Ashvini Kumaras, Naradao, the great saint Narada, Na, 
Brahma Putra Ham, the sons of Lord Brahma, Munayaham, great saintly persons, Sura Ishaham, all the great demigods, Vidama, no, Yasya, of whom, Ihitam, activity. Amshaka, Amshakaha. Those who are parts of the parts. Na, not. Tat, his. Swarupam, real personality. Pritak, separate. Isha, rulers. Maninaha, who consider ourselves to be. Translation and purpose by His Divine Grace, Eisi Bhaktivedanta Swami, Sila Prabhupada Ki Yad. Neither I, Lord Shiva, nor Brahma, nor the Aspini Kumaras, nor Narada or the other great sages who are Brahma's sons, nor even the demigods, can understand the pastimes and personality of the Supreme Lord. Although we are part of the Supreme Lord, we consider ourselves independent, separate controllers, and thus we cannot understand his identity. Purport. Brahma Samhita 533 states, Advaita machutang anading anantarupam Adhyam Purana Purusham Navayovanancha Vedeshu Durlavam Adhurlavam Atma Bhaktao Govindamadi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami I worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Govinda, who is the original person. He is absolute, infallible, and beginningless. And although expanded into unlimited forms, he is still the same original person, the oldest person, who always appears as a fresh youth. The eternal, blissful, all-knowing forms of the Lord cannot be understood even by the best Vedic scholars, but they are always manifest to pure and alloyed devotees. Lord Shiva places himself as one of the non-devotees who cannot understand the identity of the Supreme Lord. The Lord being Ananta has an unlimited numbers of, number of forms. Therefore, how is it possible for an ordinary common man to understand him? Lord Shiva, of course, is above the ordinary human beings. Yet he is unable to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Lord Shiva is not among the ordinary living entities, nor is he in the category of Lord Vishnu. He is between Lord Vishnu and the common living entity. So, humbly requesting the blessings of the Vaishnavas, without which nothing can be achieved, so that I can speak something for my own purification and your transcendental pleasure. Um, so now we're hearing of Lord Shiva. He's uh, still more or less rebuking Mother Parvati for uh, cursing. Uh, Chitra Ketu and he is saying that in one sense you can say he's comparing uh, the Lord and Chitra Ketu because both nor the activities of the Lord nor the activities of the devotees can easily be understood and in particular in this verse he himself Lord Shiva he's he is in his own categories. No, he's not Jiva, he's not the Supreme Lord, but he's very elevated personality. He himself is saying, I cannot understand the Supreme Lord, nor Lord Brahma, nor Narada, nor the Asvini Kumaras. So to understand the Lord in truth is not uh, an easy thing. And uh, even Krishna himself in Bhagavad Gita explains, he, in many places he said, understand me in truth, and no one knows me. Mantu Vedanakaschana, no one can understand me. So what means to know the absolute truth in truth? To understand actually who he is, 
In the, in the same way, what means to understand what the devotees are, how Chitraketu was acting in the way that he was acting, and that even Maya herself became bewildered. So, <clears throat> how do we know who Krishna is? This is uh, explained in actually Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur and both um, Prabhupada. They stress this point very much that in order to understand Krishna, the way to understand Krishna is through service. Krishna's teachings also. We cannot force um, we cannot force maturity, we cannot force realization of Krishna. Sometimes the devotees want to jump into higher topics um, about Krishna Lila and Krishna's pastimes, but we cannot force this takes place by revelation. Atashri Krishna Namadi, Nabavet Graham Indriya, Sevum Muke Hijivado, Sadiam es what is it? Swayam Eva Spurati Ayava. That the, the the holy name of Krishna is and his pastimes, his activities, his form, they're all transcendental. And they can only be realized. They can be realized and uh, by performing service that begins with the tongue, by chanting the holy name, taking Krishna prasad, and by rendering devotional service. You cannot force a realization of Krishna. Prabhupada will use the, the analogy of uh, the sun. You cannot force the sun to appear in the middle of the night. You cannot see the sun unless the sun manifests, uh, 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 unless the sun reveals himself. We cannot see the sun. So similarly, we cannot understand Krishna unless he refuses to reveal himself. And um, actually, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he said that he, this verse, yeah, you know, Atashri Krishna Namadhi, should be framed and you know, hung up everywhere, uh, constantly reminded, reminding us that uh, it's true service. Krishna in the uh, Prabhupada, one of my favorite purposes in the Bible, in the Prabhupada's books is, is in the Adilila. He's saying that a realization of the absolute truth takes place according, in proportion to the degree that the person has developed a service attitude. And he says that actually that realization can only take place when one who, for one who has re, uh, developed the single quality of submissiveness. And this is exemplified here by Chitra Ketu also. That what is the glory of Chitra Ketu? that he, he was cursed by Mother Parvati and he accepted the curse. And why, he could, accept it, why could, could he accept the curse? It's, I mean, this is the, the, the external energy herself is, you know, again, now you take birth in a, in a demon's body. But he could see, the, he, could, he had come to that platform of realization where he could see that Everything is taken by Krishna's plan. Nothing takes place without Krishna's sanction. So whatever is happening in my life, it must be a blessing from Krishna. And therefore, I don't have anything to fear. And this is what is being glorified, that the devotee, he's, he's happy in every situation. And why he's happy in every situation? Because he knows that his relationship with Krishna he, he, he cannot be taken away. It's permanent. Either in hell or in heaven, whatever situation I find myself in, my relationship, that reciprocation for the Lord is permanent. It's permanent. So I don't, I don't have anything to worry. And this is such a <clears throat> kind of a nice thought. Huh? And it's practical. This is not... Is something that is applicable for every one of us on a daily basis. Huh? That we, we are confronted with situations. And we, you know, these really extreme examples, right? Like, you know, you're cursed to take breath of a demon. Hmm? Like some of us may be thinking, oh, my next period is Ketu, you know, or, you know, something like that. We're worrying about what's going to happen, you know. So much, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's still so much depending on external circumstances, rather than actually depending on Krishna, that, rather than actually having faith eh, that you know there is a higher, there is a higher state of consciousness, there is a higher happiness, 
And that high happiness is based on, on consciousness. It's not based on external happiness. And throughout the Bhagavatam, we have all these ex examples that the devotees want that truth, want, that con want to attain that state of consciousness. The, and even sometimes at the expense of the, their material happiness. Even, at the, at the, you know, I will remain loyal to the truth. I will do what is right to be done. Like in, the, in this case, Chitaketu. He didn't complain. And there is so many examples of this. Uh, that, you know, the same uh, situation, which can be uh, a situation that can bring you down, the same situation can be used as a, you know, an impetus. Yeah. Prabhupada this, uh, explains this in the uh, first canto. He says that, you know, just like the expert electrician, this is my, fav my favorite purpose, perhaps in all of Prabhupada, he says that perfect electrician, he's, he, you know, he can turn the same energy, he can make cold, he can make, he can make heat, yeah. he, you know, he can do both things with the same energy. So it says that the devotee is like an expert electrician. You know, whatever situation he finds himself in, he can turn the situation in, he can turn basically the, the, the energy, the, the, inter the external energy can change it into external, into internal. You know, what, a situation which appears to be external, which appears to be, uh, you know, to bring me down, to cover me, actually acts, acts in the, in the the opposite way. And it says, I'll read actually because it's such a nice purple. I'll just read this if I can find it quickly. <clears throat> this is from the first canto, okay? And this is relevant to, to this and it's relevant to the whole Bhagavatam actually. It says, if they, this is text uh, 34, chapter 3. If the illusory energy subsides and the living entity becomes fully enriched with knowledge by the grace of the Lord, then he becomes at once enlightened with self-realization and thus becomes situated in his own glory. Now, listen carefully. This is a little kind of profound. Because the Lord is the absolute transcendence, all of his forms, names, pastimes, attributes, associates, and energies are identical with him. His transcendental energy acts according to his omnipotency. Now, the same energy acts as his external, internal, and marginal energies. And by his omnipotency, he can perform anything and everything through the agency of any of the above energies. He can turn the external energy into internal by his will. Therefore, by his grace, the external energy, which is employed in illusioning those living beings who want to have it, subsides by the will of the Lord in terms of repentance and penance of the conditioned soul. So the same energy, in the case of Chitaketu, he accepted. He, he takes responsibility for the situation. He accepted penance. Repentance. I'm actually, you know, whatever is happening, you know, is happening to rectify my consciousness. It may be delivered to me to, through someone, uh, and I, the tendency of the material, you know, the materially conditioned person is to blame. Uh, but actually he sees the, 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 the COVID as the intelligent man, he sees beyond this. He sees actually, this is the Lord. The Lord is making this arrangement for my upliftment. And then if I respond in terms of uh, uh, repentance and penance, then the same energy which is supposed to bring me down will uplift me. <clears throat> and the very same energy then acts to help the purified living being make progress on the path of self-realization. The example of electrical energy is very appropriate in this connection. The expert electrician can utilize the elect electrical energy for both heating and cooling by adjustment only. Similarly, the external, the external energy which now bewilders the living being into continuation of birth and death is turned into internal potency by the will of the Lord to lead the living beings to eternal life. 
When a living being is thus graced by the Lord, he is placed in his proper constitutional position to enjoy eternal spiritual life. So, and previous verses is described, but for a devotee there is no happiness, there is no distress. He's seeing everything equal. And it was quoted this Bismam uh, Purnam Sukhayate. It says that for the devotee the world is full of happiness. And how is this achieved? Of course, it's very easy to say, right? But when the test comes, it's so difficult to put into, into practice. But it says that this, is only, this can only be achieved by the mercy, the mercy of Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by chanting the holy name, taking shelter of the holy name, and by Prabhupada, he emphasizes so much his mood, what was his mood, and, and, and his mission was to establish service, eh? devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So by being constantly engaged in devotional service, by taking shelter of Krishna's holy names, we can actually be, we can confront every situation. We can turn any situation into a situation which is favorable for my Krishna consciousness. And this is the, you know, the transformation of the heart. Uh, they, I remember that there was some seminar, they were saying that, you know, how transformation begins. And he says that, you know, the beginning of it is good thoughts. Actually, this is another thing, like, you know, we're talk he's talking about happiness. Yeah? So, what, what is the standard of happiness? What is happiness based on? What would you say is the source of happiness? Krishna is the source of everything, yeah. Happiness itself, okay. Yeah, get it over them, please. Please sing Guru and Krishna. Yeah, we all start. Yeah, Lakshmi Morimati. Being satisfied. Being satisfied. Yeah, and, and you see, the thing is that Chitra Ketu, he was able to accept the, court, the, the curse because he was satisfied. He, he had that state of consciousness in which he was satisfied. And this is, this is, this is the real standard of happiness. But Generally, we, we base our happiness in the external circumstances, you know? What's happening? You know, if everybody's being nice to me, if I'm getting fulfillment of my material desires. And still we bring this consciousness into, into devotional life, right? That if I fulfill my material desires, I can be happy. But actually, what the Bhagavatam is presenting is not that if I fulfill my material desires, but actually... If I depend on Krishna, if I, I, if I am actually accepting every situation as Krishna's mercy, in due course of time, I will get that realization. I will actually understand who Krishna is in truth. And this is, uh, this is what, and this is what uh, Lord Shiva is praising here. He says, and he's placing himself as an ordinary conditioned soul. And he's even talking, even Narada Muni. Because the Lord is unlimited, and once, as, as we are realizing the absolute truth, as we are coming in contact with Him, we gain a, a standard of happiness and satisfaction where we become indifferent to the material world. And the example is given, you know, turning this, the example I'm, Prabhupada gives about turning, you know, the, the electrical energy into heat and cold. This is exemplified in the third canto when. Um, when Vidura, there was uh, Dritta Rasta, he, had, he had actually called for him for advice. Yeah. And there in the assembly, there were also Duryodhan, he was, uh, the Kurus were there. And Vidura immediately, he said, you know, you must immediately return your share, the, their share to the Pandavas. He said, you're maintaining the son of his religion. Duryodhan, and he was there present. He said, you, you know, it, it, this will be the cause of your own destruction. And at that point, he says that, you know, Duryodhan, he became so angry, his lip was like trembling. And, and, and he said, throw him out of the palace and leave him only with his breath. He's spying against those who are maintaining him. Such envy. And, his, and he was his uncle. And what was Vidura's response? What will be your response in that situation for that matter? Well, how will I respond? An inferior person is without any justification. Is, is it not the most, one of the most annoying things when someone 
accuse you of something you haven't done and it's an unqualified person it makes the blood boil sometimes you know but how did he respond he responded in a way that he's, he just took it okay this is uh, the arrangement of krishna and he left the palace put his bow on this on the door and he left for pilgrimage he saw that as an opportunity to escape uh, the politics that were going on in the palace and and actually you know, sometimes we have a romantic idea of surrender, but, you know, the fact was that he never saw Krishna again. He went for 35 years. He left the palace where Krishna went. He never saw Krishna again. But when Krishna was leaving the planet, who was he thinking of? He thought of Vidura. And when Uddhava told uh, Vidura about this, Vidura was crying and crying and crying. So the same situation, the same energy, the same uh, situation was acting internally for Vidura and externally for Duridan. We hear also when Krishna blew the conch, transcendent, the transcendental conch in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita. Yeah? And, and it says that, you know, the Pandavas, when they heard the conch, they were like the sound of the conch. They were, you know, they were so jubilant. They were so happy. But the core of us, they felt their heart shattered. Same, same, same situation. So we have to train ourselves to, to, in one sense, you could say, to hear this transcendental sound of Krishna, Krishna's conscience. Whenever something happens, happens to us, try to see how Krishna is helping me in this situation. This is what the Bhagavan is teaching us throughout. And the, you know, Lord Shiva is glorifying Chitra Ketu for doing this and. And it's warning us also that we should not look at the bodies from an external point of view. It's very difficult to understand what uh, uh, the internal consciousness of the body is. So, <clears throat> so this is uh, so this is so. I was saying, okay, happiness. We're talking about happiness, right? Happiness comes, and you know, our satisfaction comes from what kind of thoughts we have. You know, our thoughts. And where do we get got good thoughts from? Yeah, from Facebook, we get good thoughts. Many people believe this. Yeah? Where do we get good thoughts from? From Shastra, Srimad Bhagavatam, from the sadhus. And then when we have good thoughts, then what happens is that then we act properly. From good thoughts come good actions. This is what we're supposed to read. We're reading Bhagavatam. We are getting good ideas. But we can apply them in our lives. And then when, when, when we apply them, then that takes, uh, that, you know, gives us realization. And then it becomes a habit. It's no, longer, we, it's no longer we have to, you know, like make that effort to act in the proper way. It's, it's natural for us. That she tried to hear, okay, he accepted the course. He immediately went and paid obeisances to Mother Parvati. He wasn't like, oh, well, should I accept that? Should I reject it? No, it was natural for him. So from good actions come good habits. And then from good habits come, you know, we develop the good, the, the good character. And when we develop good character, then we attain the right destination. Yeah. So it's interesting, Prabhupada says that, you know, the illusory energy bewilders the living entity or the minds of those who want to have it. And, and again, in, this, in, the, in the purport to this pastime with Vidura and Duridan, Prabhupada says, a sentence is very, very nice. He says that uh, the devotees are always in a renounced temperament because they know, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, because they know that the material energy cannot fully satisfy them. The devotee is always in a renounced temperament. So this is... Uh, coming to the point that we, we, where we want to develop that, uh, we want to understand who Krishna is. We want to uh, develop a relationship with him. This is what understanding Krishna in truth means understanding a relationship with him through service, through chanting the holy name. And Lord Shiva, he's saying, no, you know, he's praising, he said, no, even we can, I can, no, even we can understand. So how glorious is it? So 
Same way, no one even can understand the activities of the, of the devotee. So I'm going to stick to the sign there because it says quarter to finish. So I'll finish now and then we can have a little, a few questions if someone has any questions. No questions. You accept it. Yeah. Krishna Prabhu, thank you for your wonderful lessons to us. And I have a question about the, just now you mentioned that uh, the internal potency of the Lord. And as we know that uh, when a devotee engaged the pure, devotion, uh, pure devotional service, he is in the uh, uh, internal potency of the Lord. He can see the Lord everywhere. But as we know that Lord Chaitanya and he shows us a uh, very, very higher uh, emotion. It's like uh, the separation, uh, the emotion of the separation to the Lord. So it seems that is a little different. Uh, my question is that uh, if a devotee can see the Lord everywhere, how can he feel the separation of the Lord? This is my question. Thank you. Well, it's, in one sense, it's inconceivable, right? It's inconceivable. But the, 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 the point there is that the, the devotee is so attached to the Lord that even like Lord Chaitanya, you know, he's praying that even a moment become like 12 years because of their intense attachment for the Lord. That increases their, their love for them. So. Even though they are separated physically, but they are with the Lord. And just bring, to bring it back to the, the topic that we were discussing, that, you know, we are practicing bhakti yoga, right? So yoga means to unite. It's, interestingly enough, it's the same meaning as religion. Religion means really, religare. Uh, re, like in English, re, to do again, and ligare. Ligar, it means to unite. So religion means to reunite. So yoga, so the whole process we were practicing, we are trying to reconnect with Krishna. This that you're talking about is a little high, you know. That will come later. We will be able to understand this, at least for myself, at this stage. is is very difficult. But we can, we can begin to practice, to see Krishna in every situation. Learn to be great, being faithful, being grateful. And then these higher emotions, when they come, we will be able to understand. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, you know, this is another point that is, you know, about understanding Krishna in truth. And this is described in the Bhagavad and the process to understand Krishna is that you know, begins by service, right? This is the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Susususosa Dada Anasya, Vasudeva Kataruchi, Syamahatseva Yavipra, Punya Tirta Nishevana, that, you know, by rendering devotional service to the devotees, one gains affinity from hearing about the message of, of Vasudev. Then by hearing the message of Vasudev, when one develops a taste, eh? Shimpata, Sokata, Krishna, Punya, then what happens is that Krishna, within the heart, will clean all the, you know, we do not this surits and I will clean all the anarthas. It will, you see, this point of knowing Krishna, it's not a matter of, you know, reading about him. We have to hear about him from the proper sources and we have to purify our hearts. You have, you have to purify, and then Krishna, and how the heart, the process of the cleansing of the heart takes place. He cleanses from who? One who has developed the urge to hear about him. And then what happens after that? That, you know, by regular attendance on classes of the Bhagavad and hearing, eh? then the Supreme Lord is established within one's heart. And then the effects of, na of nature, most of passion, ignorance, lust, desire, hankering disappear from the heart. At that point, it says that, you know, the devotee ga gains positive scientific knowledge of the personality of God in the stage of liberation. Eh? 
So, you know, that understanding of Krishna takes place when the heart becomes cleansed. And he says that at that point, uh, the, int the internal potency comes, descends. We're practicing sadhana bhakti, and we're, you know, through our practice, we're, we're calling for Krishna's mercy. And this is a, Prabhupada, like, you know, actually was Bhaktisiddhanta Sasvati Thakur. He makes it so simple for us. Eh? What did he say? Don't try to see Krishna, but act in ways that Krishna will want to see you. So when we, when we come to the Lord, uh, we want the Lord to see us. And when the Lord sees us, what does he see? Does he see our material body? He see our hearts. He see our your desires, your motivations. So this is where we have to work on these things. And then these things will come. Huh? We'll understand what these higher emotions of separation, union. So the, the word against, what is it? Evam prasanna manasa. Bhagavat Bhakti Yogata, huh? Bhagavat Tattva Vigyana Mukta, Sangas, Mukta Sangasi Jayate, eh? Bhakti Yoga, through the process of Bhakti. And practice of Bhakti Yoga, again, it means that, you know, we, we will be, the material energy is actually favorable for our progress in Krishna consciousness. And, and, and the, 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 the progress takes place by us taking shelter of Krishna in whatever situation we may find ourselves in. Through that, you know, and this is like a bit of, um, like, like when you go to the gym, you have to use your muscles, right, to make it strong. So Krishna sends us tests, small tests. So we become, we do a little exercise. And then from time to time, he will send big tests. Training our muscles spiritual muscles so that when actually when it comes the time of uh, death we have no other shelter take shelter of Krishna alone. Hare Krishna any other question comment Madalakshmi can we have the mic It seems like um, the the attitude or the the mentality of the devotee, in even though he's in the presence of Krishna all the time, he's always afraid of losing the presence of Krishna, mm -hmm. and so there's this constant feeling of anxiety that. Now he's there, but he's going to be gone any minute. And there's that story of Radha, Srimati Radharani when the bee was there and Madhu Mangala chased the bee away and said, now Madhu is gone, and she thought Krishna was gone. But Krishna was sitting right next to her. Hmm. But because she heard him say that, she was thrown into anxiety. Oh my gosh, he's gone. So there, there, it's, it seems like that, that feeling of separation, it's, it's almost... It's not even in terms of the physical presence, it's a, it's a state of mind that the, the devotee never gets enough of Krishna. So even when he's there, there's always the anxiety that he won't be there in a minute. And that, so there's this, there's both experiences almost simultaneously. Yeah, and the, in the Nectar of Devotion it's also described that whenever, you know, whenever you see Krishna, whenever, you know, it's always like a newer experience. And he says that when this past and also then when Srimati Radharani and Krishna, they, when they meet and they look at each other and they see the other person is, is uh, so beautiful, then Krishna becomes more beautiful. Then Srimati Radharani sees Krishna becoming more beautiful, she becomes more beautiful. And then Krishna becomes more beautiful. And then and it goes per infinitum. So this, you know, it's again to, to understand this, uh, these this, uh, truths, I find that is, you know, we can grasp and we can get some inspiration, but actually I think it takes some internal change that needs to take place, takes place you know, to be able to comprehend these things. And, I, and, and you know, I think that that was Prabhupada's uh, emphasis. Yeah? 
And, and, and he was cautioning us also that, you know, we don't jump ahead too fast, you know. Uh, and, you know, just let Krishna reveal these things. You become, become qualified to understand. What is it? First deserve, then desire. I just found very interesting that he himself, Lord Shiva, he said, I don't know. I don't know. You know, Brahma, I don't know, but he's the head of the Sampradaya. Narada Muni, he doesn't know. He's warning us. You know, don't, you know, speak, don't take these things cheaply. Don't take Krishna's pastimes cheaply. Then you will be actually really wanting to know when you actually understand well, how deep it is you know Prabhupada they told us you go through the first nine cantos study the first nine cantos then go into the tenth canto Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati he will even for, forbade his, his disciples to read certain sections of Chaitanya Charitamrita so this aspect of knowing Krishna don't take it cheaply that's one aspect the class, but the other aspect I was making that Lord Shiva is comparing, he also says, yeah, and the devotees are also very difficult to understand. Very difficult. So I think you did the wrong thing cursing here, uh, Chitra Ketu. I don't know if this is right to say, I was thinking this morning, something came, you may correct me, or some of the senior vice, but it seems like Maya got into Maya, right? Herself. The, you know, Maya make, made a mistake there. I don't know if this is right or not. Can she get into Maya? But anyway, it is described that it was the arrangement of the Lord. What purpose? For what purpose? Eh? For the benefit of Chitaketu. He wanted Chitaketu to go back to him sooner. So therefore, he had to take a birth in the, in the, in the, in the body of the demon. So it's for us, it's the same. You know, he's doing all these things. And we should look at the bigger picture. That actually, Krishna wants us back. So whatever arrangement, it may, be, it may appear unfavorable, but on the long term, it is for my benefit. That is what is being taught. And we have to assimilate this. And then we become, you know, this is Sambanda Gyana also. Then we become very, uh, you know, we're grounded. When things happen, we have something. That's what I say. We have good thoughts. Good thoughts. Then you can, in any situation, you can remain steady. That's why we need to read Prabhupada's book. That way we have to study the, you know, all Prabhupada's books carefully to get this understanding. Not in to get into high, some higher you know, thing. You know. Get, first get the, 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 get the foundation right. And then we can move into other things. Yeah. Thank you for your class. Um, just a, a question keeps coming in my mind when I'm hearing these past, this pastime, that, um, how you're saying any situation, we can use it to yeah. uh, raise ourselves you know, to the internal potency or um, in the opposite way. Um, but maybe it's you know, because of one's own limitations. One, because? Because of one's own limitations, one might not be able to do that. Yeah. How, how does one know if uh, one situation is... Thank you. Conducive? Wonderful question. That's yeah. the best question I, I could possibly get today. How do you do it? How will you do it? And how do you know if... You know, maybe but Krishna what will you do in that situation? Do you know the answer? Well, you can consult with the yeah. senior devotees. Therefore, we need senior Vaishnava association to be able to see the truth. What is the truth? The truth is Krishna is there. Krishna wants us. We're his eternal servants. And he's helping us. But somehow we don't see this. Right? I don't see it most of the time. So I have to form my own Skype or consult with some senior, the one, and then he said, no, it's like, and then you start to see the same situation from a different perspective. Krishna conscious perspective. So it takes adjustment. It's not like, oh, you know, this happened. Oh, yes, Krishna's mercy. It's also not like that. It takes, and sometimes it may take years. I, I just uh, saw, you know, my spiritual master, he left his con some years back, and it was a traumatic experience. 
for many of us. And I just, the, one of my God brothers the other day posted in Facebook, or some good thought from Facebook, okay? He said that, uh, he said, actually, he said, I can see now that I wouldn't be here if, you know, all the things that we went through when my spiritual master left, you know? So I thought such a nice thing. And then I was in communi communicating with another God brother on email. And he said exactly, exactly the same thing. They didn't know what they were saying each other. So at the time of the trauma, it was not like Christmas mercy. It was like, why? Why this happened to me, you know? But we see, we, tr we try to apply this thing. And, and then after some time, then you look back and say, actually, he, Krishna just, it's like, you know, he shook us up. It's like, this is described in the, also in, what is it, the fourth canto? Yeah, when, when Dhruva Maharaj, when he's fighting the Yakshas, right? And he says that, you know, the Yakshas, they, they, they were throwing arrows at him. It was like a, like a storm of arrows. He couldn't see anything. And he compares this to like a stone on a peak, on a mountain peak. And he said, what, what does the stone do after the storm is over? He cleanses the, the, the mountain peak, is cleansed by the, the rain and everything. So similarly, he says that, you know, that sometimes Krishna's test is like this, like, you know, we're bombarding, we cannot even see what's going on. Therefore, we need to take shelter of the devotees. And then when we take shelter and then we see it, sometimes we will cry. Yeah? That actually, Krishna is helping me. And I couldn't see it. Yeah? What, is the, what is the real problem? Is the real problem what's happening? Or is it my resistance? To actually see that this is help, this is Krishna's arrangement, and this is high things. I am trying to apply them myself, so I'm not saying that this is you know that's, you have to consult with the bodies. But the principle we should accept. That's what I'm talking. Yes, accept the principle, and then we can progress in Krishna consciousness very nicely. Thank you very much. Sila Prabhupada ki jai. Grantarashi Mahabhagavatam ki. Itai Gora Premanande.